friends, thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, good to have you here for Hope Fellowship um, online here on Zoom. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, this week, we are talking about our series, Love, Light, and Life, and continuing by talking about God as light. Uh, but before we do, um, just a couple of updates. I was wondering between, well, first, I, I need to say, last Monday, Christine started um, doing something called Mindful Mondays. Um, we met outside in the parking lot out in front of Sparty United Methodist Church. As I know for those of you that are outside of the area, it's not something you can participate in, and I'm sorry for that. But boy, what a wonderful time that was. Um, that was just the most amazing way to start off the week. Um, so thank you to Christine for offering that for us. She did an amazing job leading us um, through that mindful, that prayerful mindfulness uh, moment. And it's happening again tomorrow at nine o'clock. So if you are in the region and want to join us at nine o'clock, we'll meet in front of Sparta UMC. We might go over to the prayer garden. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But meet in front of Sparta UMC. We'll have someone out there to meet you. And um, it was not super long. It was brief and just a great way to start the week. And Christine, I was wondering if you would, not to put you on the spot here doubly, but how did the supply drive go on Friday? Whoa, it was intense. <laughs> it was good though. Um, I was thrilled with how many people we were able to help. Um, but like Kyla, we were both kind of bummed that we had to turn people away. So, um, but it was really good. And uh, let's see, we gave away 60, I believe. It was close to 60. Yeah. 60 students worth of supplies, so lots and lots of supplies. But we are going to continue, um, since we did have to turn some people away, which broke our hearts, we're going to continue this week collecting some items. And I know a lot of people from um, Sparta UMC heard my message this morning asking for generous donations and if anybody has any donations that they'd like to make or supplies that they'd like to donate we're going to be giving them out again this week for anybody that still has things that they need or for the group b students that don't actually go back until next monday i feel like there's still a great need in the community um based on what we saw on friday there's definitely a need yeah so Thank you to Kyla and Christine for really reaching out to the community and, and seeing that need and helping folks. Um, and if that's something that you would like to help out with over the upcoming week, um, as we try to get some supplies out to the people that uh, you know we had to turn away, um, reach out to Kyla and or Christine and they will be able to help you with that. So we, we begin with a centering time often here at Hope Fellowship. We try to mix it up. And this week we're going to do a video centering time. Uh, so this is something, uh, if it works, last week my screen sharing didn't work, but I'm gonna try to share my screen. Uh, this is about a two and a half minute video. You'll see some uh, rolling scenery with some words and someone reading that prayer. It's a great meditation on God as light, which is what we're talking about tonight. Um, so I would encourage you as we, uh, to use this as a time just to focus on God's presence, uh, to put aside the stresses that you have from the week ahead and the week behind. Um, you can close your eyes and listen, or you can watch the screen. Um, but we're, I'm going to put us, um, this on the screen for us. O oh, radiant light, O oh, flame divine, as shines the light of morning's dawn, come bless the embers of the earth, sparks flung from our eternal birth. O oh, word of God, the source of life, you rouse us from the night of fears to open souls and minds and ears and hear the music of the spheres. You 
are the fire that birthed all things. The force that spins the galaxies. You are the flame within all flames. The hidden power that knows no name. From you all things that are were sent. And into you does all extend. Peel back the bark of any tree. Lift up a stone. They blaze with thee. Oh, happy light, we feel your heat. The starlight shining in our bones. You fill us all with cosmic grace. We host your presence in this place. O risen Christ, you shine in us. O radiant light, O flame divine, O risen Christ, shine in us. The radiance of your holiness, despite the sting of death and strife, we rise to dance. This dance of life. Amen. So as we begin tonight, uh, we always take a moment to pause and, and then go in here. Um, always take a moment to pause and to share the story of what's going on in our lives, the journey that we're all on. Um, it's a time to share the things that we're grateful for and that we're excited about in life. And it's a time to share the struggles as well. Um, they're all valid. They're all a part of our journey. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to put myself on mute and allow anyone that wants to, to share. I just wanted to um, introduce, well, now he disappeared, but that, <laughs> that's, um, the guy who just joined us is a friend of mine, Antonio Bobbs, um, and I told him about our um, Hope Fellowship last week, and he's watched a couple on YouTube, so um, hi, Antonio. He's hi, somewhere. Antonio, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Antonio. Yeah, hi, Antonio. <laughs> Wherever you are. It's in Arizona also. I meant on, on technology. He's somewhere in the system, somewhere. That's right, yes, somewhere. I'll go. Uh, so I was just thinking the other night at Grace Kitchen, I even stopped and took a picture. Um, three of our volunteers all working together, um, you know, cutting up corn and making sloppy joes. It just occurred to me that in this small community, we had a business owner on Main Street who was involved every single week, the editor of our local newspaper, and a rising ninth grader who I've known since she was about three years old, who just really, really wanted to come and help. All three heads together, working hard, wearing masks, and all from such different diverse backgrounds, all working to take care of their community. And I thought that was, that just moment really stuck with me. And so that was great. Yeah.
Ren, I had a similar feeling at Grace Kitchen on Wednesday night. I was just thinking about how a lot of churches are struggling right now to figure out how to connect during this time and how to stay faithful to God, faithful to each other. And I was thinking about how have I been able to stay faithful throughout this time? And one of the things I'm very grateful for is our Zoom meetings here on Sunday nights. I couldn't make it without that. But I also really think Grace Kitchen has been a huge source of church for me. And I've just really enjoyed that week to week. Uh, it's a weekly faithful gathering of a few that are committed to serving in love. And I just feel like what else is church other than that? So. Um, yeah, I'm just really grateful for all these small moments that have certainly helped carry me through because I've had some weary moments too. Yeah. It's his birthday. Happy birthday. These guys were really sweet to me today. Uh, and, Thankful for them and thankful for you all. Thankful for life. Yeah. I'd be thankful for the pizza. Yeah, and thankful for a good pizza. Ben, got a question. We're a small group, and right off that entrance we used to use to come into the to the room Sunday night, there's this big room before we get to the room we sit in. Is there any chance we could m mark it out somehow and social distance properly and wear masks and stuff and have uh, person to person inside the building if we're all night? It's a small group, you know, I'm not going to go through this with you. You know what the deal is. Um, any chance? So make sure. It's, yeah. Um, so that's something I've been actively thinking about a lot and um, I think one of the main concerns I have with that is we would be required. We, we, if we meet in the room, we still have to use uh, CDC guidelines, which require everyone to wear a mask in the room. Um, and so I want, you know, we eventually want to move that direction, but we also want to still be able to include the people that are joining us online or that maybe don't want to come in person. And I'm just concerned right now that if we have half of the people wearing masks, we're just not going to be able to understand each other uh, <laughs> for a, for a discussion based church. I just think that's going to be a pretty big hurdle. Um, I am loosely working on an outdoors idea that I would like, don't want to talk about now because I'm not ready to, <laughs> but uh, um, I'm working on something. So that's a great question. Okay. Thank you. Any other stories from the week? So for me, um, teachers and students have been heavy on my heart for the last week. And um, just, you know, if we could all keep them in our thoughts and prayers as they go through the craziness of starting school again under really weird circumstances. I think that's um, something that's been heavy on my mind. Same. That reminded me of a praise that I thought was really cool that happened this week. As you know, Rosanna set up her classroom. That's my daughter. And she got her whole classroom set up and everything. And then she told, was told, uh, you have to move. You have to move everything, move to another class. And um, so she moved to the other class. And the other class gave her an outside entrance and her own bathroom. So, and it's gone virtual now, so she doesn't have to have any other contact with anybody else. So that was kind of reminded me of Ephesians 3.22 about more than you could ask or think. And at first when you're all like, oh my gosh, I got to move. I just put everything up and it's like, no, Lord told me to do this. And that was the blessing she got. So I thought that was cool.
All right. Well, thank you all for those of you that shared. Um, and yeah, at, I think at the end of the night tonight, I really would like to say a special prayer for um, those that are involved in education. I know um, Catherine's school is starting back tomorrow and the schools here in Allegheny are starting back tomorrow. And everybody probably knows someone that's connected with um, kids or uh, adults that are going back to school in some form or fashion. Um, and there's, of course, a lot of anxiety surrounding that this year more than ever before. So I, I think it's really important for us um, to not just pray for folks that are involved in all levels of that, but I, I would encourage you to, as you go through the week, if a teacher or administrator or parent or student pops into your mind, send them a text message um, or uh, some form of communication that lets them know you're thinking about them, that you remember them, um, that you care about them, that you're praying for them, because um, I think that goes a million miles. Um, so tonight we are considering or con continuing our conversation that we've been talking about the last couple weeks. Um, this week and next week will be our final ones in it. We are talking about God as love light and life. And a lot of this is coming from uh, the book and writings of John and also from Paul as well. And uh, yeah, tonight we are talking about Jesus being revealed to us as the light of the world. The author of the letter John says that Jesus told us that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Light is a very interesting metaphor um, that the author of the book of John and several other authors in the Bible use to describe God. Um, scientifically speaking, light is the fastest known thing in the universe. It moves so fast that um, time almost compresses in light and in some ways past, present, and future happen all at once. Um, Light is the universal symbol of hope and truth and goodness. Light casts out the darkness and drives away our fear. It doesn't matter how dark it is, the tiniest spark can illuminate a dark space. Light reveals truth. Light is what we refer to when we begin to unravel the mysteries of the universe when we use words like illumination and enlightenment. Light was also there at the beginning when chaos was reshaped into the created world. Light is a beautiful thing, yet we don't ever see it. But because of light, we see everything else. Light doesn't actually change anything, but it reveals what is already there, showing its true colors, revealing the true nature of reality. And because of that, it changes everything. So maybe those were the types of things that the author of John was meditating on and thinking about when he wrote the words that we're about to read together. Um, so we're going to read some selections from the first chapter of John. This is one of those passages that often gets read at a seasonal time. This is associated with Advent or the Christmas season. Um, but it wasn't written for that, so I think we can read it outside <laughs> outside of those seasonal holidays. So I'm gonna throw it on the screen here. And one of the things that we have often done at Hope Fellowship is just invited other people to take some turns reading these passages out loud. Uh, we don't really sing at Hope Fellowship, but we've often thought before that when we hear multiple voices read these passages, it almost sounds like music. Um, so anyone that likes to can start you can read a line or two, and then maybe someone else can pick it up. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. 
In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Thank you all for reading that. Um, I realize that I put a different translation on there than I, I meant to. Um, there's uh, several different variances there. Sometimes, the, you know, the, it says the word, um, the word was God, the word was with God. That's, that's a, a Greek word translated, it's logos, uh, which sometimes can be translated as a voice. The voice was with God, the voice was God, it can be translated as um, wisdom. There's a lot, of, a lot of different things there, but it's talking about Jesus. Um, and also, I just want to say, I think a better translation of it would be that light is the light of all humanity. Um, that's kind of what the Greek word is going for there. Um, but yeah, when we started Hope Fellowship, we didn't want to have sermons as kind of the center of our time. We wanted to have conversations and we wanted to have discussions. Um, so this here is a conversation starter, what I'm about to do, um, even though I have to really hold myself back because I could easily sermonize a lot of those, those passages because there's so much depth to them. Um, I simply want to highlight a few things that I hope launch us into a discussion of God as light. Um, if you don't know, I actually have a coach I talk to um, about once a month. He's not like a baseball coach or anything, but he coaches me in being a pastor. Uh, his name is Mike Slaughter, and he's a great guy. Um, and we were talking about this series and talking about this passage. And he told me something I, I hadn't realized, but he said that this idea of love, light, and life is actually the way the Eastern, many of the Eastern Christians, um, so kind of like Greece over, uh, many of the ways they talk about God. That's kind of how they describe the Trinity. So whereas the Western Christians tend to say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Eastern Christians tend to say love, light, and life, which I thought was pretty incredible. And, you know, maybe if you're a person that's never really been able to connect with the, the Trinity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I think love, light, and life is an equally um, powerful, beautiful, and even biblical way um, to look at that relationship between, um, between the Trinity, the divine dance at the center of the universe. We were talking also about how this particular topic of light reveals a lot about God and creation. Because of the passage we just read, um, Richard Rohr, who's an author I've been reading a little bit lately, he calls, because of what that passage says, he calls creation the first coming of Jesus or the first incarnation. Because it's in this passage that we see through the light of life, all things were created. Nothing was made that has been made without the light. And Paul tells us the same thing in Colossians. He says, all things were created through, through Jesus. And Paul even takes it a step farther to say, um, Jesus is everything and is in everything. That's in Colossians 3.11. Now, I think this is really significant because what the light reveals to us is that we live in a Christ-soaked world. God's nature and character and goodness are within all of creation. And I think that's important to talk about because there's been a somewhat dominant view among Christians in the Western world um, that kind of goes like this, kind of the idea that Jesus has saved us from this gross world and is going, it's all going to be destroyed someday and Jesus is going to take us out of it. So creation doesn't even matter. But, but what, when we study Jesus as the light of life, the light of the world, we realize it matters because Jesus loves creation and God called creation good. And creation is a part of how God reveals God's self to us. So that doesn't mean that God is creation. It means that God speaks through creation and is revealed through creation. 
So we care for it. We steward this amazing Christ-filled gift that we've been given in creation around us. The other conversation I wanted to get started tonight is this idea that John gives us that the light was coming into the world and the light shined on all people, giving them the right or the ability to be called children of God. That passage we read says, the light shines on all people. I just wanna point out one of the things I did this week is pretty much anytime my family wasn't around because I didn't want to look crazy. I read this passage out loud. So I read it out loud probably like 30 or 35 times. And it's interesting how you hear things differently um, when you read it out loud. Um, and this was one of those things that really jumped out to me. The light shines on all people. I've heard this passage many times. Maybe you have too. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there as in your own life, you might want to take a passage for a week and read it out loud every time you're not surrounded by people that will think you're crazy if you're just <laughs> standing around reading things out loud all day. Um, it's a great way to take a familiar passage and see it in a new light. So the light shines on all people, which means no one is excluded from the life-giving light of Christ. There is a grace in this that no one has to earn or achieve this light. No one group is privileged to access it faster than the others. No one has to solve a riddle to find it. It's shining brightly for all. If light is not something that we see, but allows us to see things, then this shows us the reality of the inclusiveness of God, the way God sees humanity, and perhaps the way we should view humanity as well. I read this week that maybe one of the best teachings of Jesus to understand this part of the passage through is the parable of the lost child, or sometimes called the parable of the prodigal son. In that somewhat famous story, Jesus tells about a rebellious child that leaves the father's house and goes to live life on his own, in his own way. And after, you know, some good times, he eventually ends up in a rough spot living in a pig pen. And he begins to wonder, maybe I could go back to my father's house and at least be a servant in my father's home. And the thing about that story is he never stopped being a child of the father. He simply didn't recognize it. He didn't feel like he had the rights to that relationship. The light of life in Jesus reveals our true nature as children of God. You may not always recognize it, but Jesus makes it possible for us to live into this true and full identity. Um, the message translation calls it our true selves. And that phrase, children of God, it represents a shift in the world, the way people thought from interactions with the divine, where it's almost more of a servant master relationship you see a lot of that when you look at the Old Testament or you look at other of those ancient religions. Um, it's a very hierarchical. God is up here and we're down here and always trying to please this God figure. Whereas what Jesus is inviting us into is a relational, um, beautiful, and loving uh, relationship. It's a beautiful metaphor. And we always use metaphors when we talk about the divine because there's not one human word that can fully describe or define God. So I wanna open up this conversation tonight by asking you a few questions. And the first one is, since we're talking about the light as a metaphor, what do you see in this idea of God as light? What, what stands out to you for using light as a metaphor for talking about God? And just remember, you can use the chat or you can speak um, there's a lot of different ways you can connect. So what does the metaphor, the idea of God as light mean to you? Someone um, mentioned something to me the other day that I hadn't thought about it this way before that I really liked was if you're, if you're fighting darkness, you can't turn off the darkness, right? The only you can do is add light and that 
that to me, I don't know that what that way of thinking about it was really helpful to me when you think about trying to fight injustice or, you know, that you can't sort of fight that, you can't fight darkness with more darkness and you can't really even stop darkness. All you can do is add the light and then that's what makes the difference. And I feel like that is a great, you know, an, a, thinking of God as light, that is the light that you're, that you're adding when you add the love. Makes it seem more manageable too. You don't have to manage the darkness. You can concentrate on bringing light. I feel like that's gives me more direction. <laughs> yeah, or even in in helping people change or helping yourself change. It's not necessarily like it's turning on the light, right? It's turning on the light that was already there in yourself or already there in some in someone else, as opposed to like making them go away or or stopping them from being who they really are. I like that idea that you just said, Ben. Of it's who we, who we truly are is that light that, that we have of God in us. When Ben and I first started talking about um, this whole conversation series and just using the words love, light, and life to have a discussion series on what God is like, it, something about it just made me feel so much more comfortable using those words about God because we don't have to attribute them to like person-like qualities. It, it sets us free from the um, limited scope that I think we've put on God, especially in our Western uh, way of Christianity, of doing Christianity, of viewing Christianity. And so many people have used um, human-like qualities to put God into their own agenda or to make their God look like them. And when we use words like light and love and life, it sets us free from doing that. It makes um, God much bigger than anything that, that humans are on their own. I, I just, it's very freeing. I kind of um, connect light and hope together that, um, you know, that the sun coming up in the morning brings hope for the new day. But um, when I think about um, sort of shining God's light through me, through my actions, um, it's, you know, it's not a physical light. It's just that I can give somebody else that, that little kind of spark or flame of hope. Um, or when I see it in somebody else, it's not a visual that I see. It's just that the warmth and the the hope that there is, you know, that there is goodness or a signal that there, yeah, there, there are good people around or, um, so I just connect the two together, the light and hope. Where, um, We've seen two rainbows on two different days this week after a dark, cloudy rain. And I feel like that's been really significant, especially this last few days, to be reminded that, you know, God is, he's here and he's with us and he is giving us hope and light every day. And that was just a really tangible way to see that. And it was really helpful, I thought. I think I also remember reading that guru, you know, teacher. If you, The translation of that is um, one who leads out of darkness, something like that. And so thinking of guru and props to all of our teachers and just what God is or who God is to us, you know, leads us out of the darkness. And that it is a process. It's a journey. I like to think about, you know, our journey is being illuminated. It's, we're growing in it. We're understanding more and more truth as we go. And even, um, there's a few stories in the Bible where Jesus re returns sight to a person who is blind 
and it doesn't happen right away it's gradual and it's almost like scales are falling off their eyes and i think that's pretty true of how it is with our own journeys too it's like little by little more is revealed to us more light is shed on our situation or on the world or um is it it's a process I also like that we can share flashlights. Like sometimes my flashlight dies and somebody else can <laughs> turn one on and I can go by their light for a little while until I might recharge mine. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think it's um, by coincidence that we are drawn to things like sitting in the sunshine and soaking it up or sitting around a bonfire together we're drawn to light because of that comfort and hope and peace that it brings and when i think of all of us shining our little lights together it is like lighting a little fire that brings warmth and comfort and hope I'm going to find some way to bring that into my classroom tomorrow. Thank you. The flashlight idea and lights and love and supporting one another. That was awesome. Sometimes I hope fellowship, I think to myself, man, I wish these people could all collectively write a book. Some great thoughts. Um, good, good thinking, everyone. Uh, that was, I've like done a lot of research this week on God is light and that was some of the best stuff I've heard. Well done. Uh, so uh, I want to ask a next question about if Jesus is the light and we talked about how light we can't, you can't like see light, but light helps you see all things. So if Jesus is the light, how does that change the way that, how could that change the way we view the world? So if we're looking at the world through the light of Jesus, what is different? I think one way would be you were just talking about how light um, changes time, you know, from a because of science. I don't know what exactly, exactly that works, but because of science that I don't understand, it like changes time. And it's interesting to think of of Jesus as being able to see people like at the end of their journey, you know, like like Kyla, you were just saying how it's this process that we're in and it's messy right now, but if it's interesting to think of Jesus looking at people and seeing them already, already saved, already, you know, where they need to be at the end of their journey and to be able to then interact with people like that from that perspective of like, you're, I see, I see you as this eternal being that God loves, who's created in God's image instead of seeing all the mess, which I think is kind of like how you look at children too. You know, you see children and they, do things that are just like what are you thinking and yet you're like but you're you're great you're gonna be great yes i love you so much <laughs> yes i thought Not your kids um <laughs> we talked about that before when we were studying the life of peter because peter is a mess if you look at like just the stories that peter's friends and jesus tell about peter he makes a lot of just really crazy errors and speaks, puts his foot in his mouth. But Ben and I were saying how cool it would be like to be Jesus. And the moment that Peter walks into his life is like this montage of all the things that he knows Peter's going to do and Peter's going to become. And he even gives him a nickname like way that first time he meets Peter, he says, I'm going to call you Cephas, which means rock because Jesus knows that he's going to become the solid rock of a person. And yeah, I think if we could view people in that lens, not of who they are or of their mistakes, but of who they could become. And 
with the right support and the right guidance of who that person is as we help shine light it would trans i mean we'd have such a hopeful and positive view of people of who they are in the process of becoming question may have been worded a little awkwardly, but I'm thinking maybe it may be saying it just as how can Jesus cause us to look at the world differently, looking at it through the lens of Jesus. Um, one thing I'll throw out as, as an example that I was kind of hit with this week as I was thinking about the passage. Um, I was talking with my two children and uh, we were talking about someone that was just causing grief. <laughs> and uh, the reminder of this passage is God's light is shining on them. And I said to all three of us, God loves this person. And it's very important to remember. And may God give that person the same grace that I hope for for myself. And I feel like that can kind of reframe how we, how we look at people. Any other thoughts? Just thinking about how our, our kids teach us. Um, we were going around the table the other evening and... Um, uh, I mean, Lucy, she just said um, she wanted to pray for a leader that um, she just thought needed our prayers. And um, just that reminded us that Jesus, that's what God asked us to do, you know, to pray for our, our leaders. And I was just very humbled by it and was reminded, like, I, just if we were to see, I mean, Jesus sees the potential in everybody. Jesus sees the hurt in everybody. Jesus sees the long road that individuals have, how they've come to be who they are. And, you know, often we only see, you know, just the, the little blurps or the glimpses of, of how people react to certain things rather than seeing their whole heart or their whole intentions and the hurt. And I was just reminded to have a wider, a wider view and, That's a great point. And I think about that with like with people coming into the bakery or what we're going through in the bakery and thinking of like, so this person heard the frustration that came out in this one moment, but they didn't see like all this other stuff that you dealt with, you know, up until that point and all the things that happened in the behind the scenes and all the things that sort of got you to that point of having a low moment where you didn't respond the way that, you know, in, in your best, best way. Um, and just, I'm, I've been trying to have a lot more compassion for that lately. I know I certainly do with restaurants, man. I do not give bad reviews anymore. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're trying as hard as they can. And I should probably be like that with people more often too, especially politicians that are trying to run the world. That's not an easy place to be right now. Just looking at our time here, that might be a good lead into our next question. Um, so what we read tonight comes from John 1, and then a little later on in John chapter 8, Jesus gets up in front of this whole crowd and he says, he shouts, I am the light of the world. Um, and then in the book of Matthew, to a group of people, Jesus says, you all are the light of the world. Uh, both things are true. Both things are true. Um, so my question is, um, in what ways do you think we participate with Jesus in shining God's light in the world? In what ways do we or can we participate with Jesus in shining God's light in the world? I feel that God relies on us to be the hands and the feet, you know, that, that God speaks to us in nature and in quiet moments and when we can pause from distractions or stress and worry 
then we can hear the, the quiet voice that reminds us to consider our neighbor or um, to consider, yeah, just people who, who may not have someone else to listen to. I feel like that's been something I've, I've learned myself just to, to be open because um, I can feel so small in my world, in my home, and during this time it's pretty isolated. And then we step out and go for a walk and meet neighbors and my world just expands. And I feel like that's what God calls us to, um, this, the small voices yeah, to be hands and feet. For God. In addition, I think we need to have an aura about us that displays the light of Christ. And you see it all the time in people. You've met people that have that aura and they're nice to be around. They got a smile on their face, a song in their heart, and, and, and are in, in particular, they don't always say good things. This is not, you know, Disneyland, but, but it, it, they have an aura about them that says, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I'm trying to do this and uh, appreciate your help type of thing, you know? And then there are other people that have the other kind of aura. And you all have met those too. But we're not going to talk about them. God's light shines on them. <laughs> well, I like what Elizabeth uh, talked about earlier about how we can't stop the darkness. We can't necessarily fight the darkness, but um, we can shine our light. And I think that is a lot of like what Jesus calls us to do is not to necessarily engage every argument that is that comes our way you know there's a lot of times where I'm on social media and I have a whole bunch of things that I want to say <laughs> but to choose to step back and I think it's in those moments whenever we can offer forgiveness or humility or grace or kindness instead of um contributing to the noise or the darkness that that shines a light <laughs> yeah because a lot of times it's it's easier as a human being to contribute to the noise and the darkness than it is to contribute to the light and uh that's i'm still working on that i've been thinking about ways to try to be a light especially tomorrow but every day when I'm at school if we're all wearing masks and you know you can't there's no high fives there's no pats on the backs there's definitely no hugs for the kids and they can't see your face what what ways can you be that light to them that that, that flicker of comfort when they come through the back door um so I I guess maybe some suggestions would be nice kind of just do the heart and <laughs> put that out there. But it's, um, I, I feel challenged about that tomorrow for tomorrow. About all you have left, Ren, is your tone. My tone? Your tone and volume. Yeah. I have that same worry, Ren, that um, I've always greeted my kids at the door either with a handshake or a hug or whatever they needed. And that's the one piece of my day that I don't have planned out, that I don't have a contingency plan. Um, you know, I've got, I'm going to have my little temperature gun and I, that's the one piece of my day that that's worrying me. The computer, I am not tech savvy at all. I could care less if it works or doesn't work tomorrow. I've got, you know, I, it should be fine. I, I'm not checking it today. I, it's just, but that piece, that, um, that connection with those kiddos. And, you know, I know they're excited to come back, but I know they're going to be nervous too. And yeah, some suggestions would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Again, wouldn't it be a cool opportunity to teach the kids some sign language, if you could, like some basic, yeah. simple, I'm happy to see you. You're welcome here. Hope you're having a great day. You know, just some simple. That's a good idea. That that you guys, it could be like your secret code throughout the year. Yes. Like, okay, I'm gonna give you my sign. You're welcome here. You know, just something like that, or stickers. Stickers go a long way too. <laughs> yeah. 
good ideas. Ren, you always talk about um, music in your Tuesdays. Are you allowed to play music as they come in or anything as a uplifting welcome thing? Well, it wouldn't be up to me, but maybe they're planning to do that and that, that would be a nice that would be a nice idea mm -hmm. to have some happy music playing. Maybe I'll go suggest some things. <laughs> but, Catherine, yeah. if you need any happy music suggestions, reach out to Ren. She's always got a happy song. We got that. Yeah, I love those. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, a couple of other teachers and I had thought about doing, because um, we have a kind of a staggered start to the day where we're waiting for new kids, breakfast kids, everybody. Um, so we're going to have some yoga on our screen stuff so like that they can do at their chair. So hopefully I'm just thinking maybe some meditation type music, just calming music and or That's happy music. Idea. Yeah. That. I was thinking the same thing, Catherine, just kids are gonna, you know, there's an underlying stress that I think kids mm -hmm. and teachers will, will have all day long. And right. I think it, it's going to be really tiring at the end of the day. So just to, to speak it so that kids can become aware, like, are you feeling fatigued? Are you feeling tired? Because it is a lot. We might need to get up and I don't know if you're allowed to shake out your hands or yeah. do some things that move your shoulders because we will be tense, you know. Right. Yeah. And yoga and, and deep breathing to just help relax. Because yeah. there's, there's just underlying stress that kids and teachers will be holding in and not being able to realize why their stomach hurts or why they might right. have it. And it's all tension and stress that can build up. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea, though, to have it on the screen. And, and I think just talking about it, kids need to be able to recognize when they're feeling stressed or overwhelmed and to have yeah. some steps that, um, to let you know how they're feeling and especially this first week, you know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Are there any, like, um, I don't know how you do this with kids, because as I was thinking through this, then I realized, well, you might just be giving them weapons, but, like, where you have a sign that's, like, a smiley face or a sign that's a sad face, or, you know, kind of, like, emojis with something where someone could hold it up or, like, put it on their desk. This is what I'm feeling right now, since you don't have the, you know, yeah. facial expression. Facial I was thinking that same thing, E.B., and I was thinking about putting like a little uh, canister of Play-Doh at everybody's desks, mm -hmm. and as they come in, they could just do like free play, but then there's a designated moment where, okay, you're going to show me how you feel today, and and you could do it too. You could say, today I am all happy, or today I am struggling, <laughs> <laughs> but that way they could have that opportunity to express themselves in a good mm -hmm. physical yeah, movement. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to have Play-Doh this year because you can't wash it. Right. I know, it's just, oh. You know those, um, like, it, it wouldn't be work for this week, but at Halloween, you can buy, like, Costco sells those little miniature things of Play-Doh that, yeah. it, they're like 36 in a, a bag or something. That would be something that everybody could have their own Play-Doh and take, well, in my case, my kids moved to, to three other teachers, so... Each yeah. group could they could take their play day with them. That's good. They could just take it with yeah. them today. I like that. Dumb question. Has anybody tried to Lysol play doh and see what happens? I have not. Yeah, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I you did just remind me I forgot to buy Lysol yesterday when I was in town. <laughs> I have other cleaning stuff that the school's provided, but I think Lysol might be stronger. <laughs> I think all these are good tips for us too. I was just talking to my sister today and we were just saying how easy it is in all of the change and transitional periods for us to lose self-care and our own awareness of how we're doing or how we're feeling. So if we all need Play-Doh, I can get us Play-Doh <laughs> so we can we'll make some. Make some tonight. We can share how we're feeling. <laughs> yeah. Or anything that would be just a different way to express, like, I don't know if there's even like a bracelet that had different colored beads or something that you could 
say, I'm in a blue mood, or I'm in a red mood, I'm in a yellow happy mood, something that would just other ways to express how you're feeling at that time. Yeah. And we all, it's a good point, Kyla. I think all of us need to get better at that. And we all right now need to figure out new ways to communicate because it's just so different. Right. And we need to lice all everything, Gary. I think you could make, you should set up a YouTube channel where you just lice all stuff and then see what happens. <laughs> what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a friend um, whose daughter was upset and having trouble communicating it and said she just didn't feel like using words. So they came up with a phrase, and it is feed the unicorn. So when her daughter doesn't want to communicate or whatever, and she just posted last week, actually, that she just came up to her in the kitchen and said, Mom, feed the unicorn. So that let her know that she just needed a hug. She was stressed. So maybe a catchphrase is great for parents also. Yeah. I Great conversation, everyone. Oh, Ren, were you going to say something? I was just going to say keeping a sense of humor about everything and trying not to take it too seriously might be a, yep. a good way to go. Yeah. yeah. One thing I tell people a lot uh, these days is if you woke up and tried today, like you did it. Good job. Um, you did you did amazing and I think that's grace that we need to remember for ourselves and I think we need to constantly offer that grace to others things are hard right now things are filled with anxiety simple tasks that we used to do on autopilot now like communicating your emotions to people uh, now uh, require a lot of thought and creativity um, so yeah give each other that grace I just want to say too speaking along grace um Something that God has taught me a lot, and it's been a hard lesson to learn, is I am not the light. <laughs> and if I try to lead people around as me being the source of their light, gosh, I'm going to lead them to some dark places sometimes, and I'm going to let them down. But I think keeping in mind that I'm a flashlight, I'm a candle, and sometimes I need to be relit, and sometimes I need to go back to the source. And the whole time, I'm just a light bearer. I am drawing them to the source of light and love and life and walking that journey with them. But I am not the source on my own. Yep. Whatever you need to do to recharge, take the time to do it. Well, friends, I'm noticing we're getting to the end of our time, and I want to honor. Um, uh, I know Zoom meetings, when they go past an hour, can your eyes can glaze over a little bit. At least mine do, uh, no matter how great the conversation is. So I want to close tonight by sharing something I learned about brain science this week that I'm pretty sure is true, but uh, just want to be completely on the open that I have no clinical psychological training. Uh, so what I learned is that... Um, the part of our brain that does like the whole flight or the fight or flight thing, like when we get scared or anxious, when there's an earthquake, um, when there's 20 earthquakes in a week, and so your brain is just trapped in this constant flight or flight mentality. Um, That's how I learned about this. Someone told me like, if you're not used to earthquakes and you're in a state of earthquakes happening a lot, like your brain isn't going to leave fight or flight mentality. It's going to get trapped there. Um, and I think that's, that kind of hit me that that's kind of true of this whole season of life, right? Like so we're kind of just trapped in this fight or flight mentality because we never know uh, when the next aftershock is going to be, whether that's real earthquake aftershocks or just the next pandemic stressful thing for those of you going back to schools for our kids going back to schools like it's the same thing um, it's easy for your brain to get stuck in that mindset and so the cool thing is like the whatever it's called the scientific part of our brain that does the fight or flight thing literally cannot process gratitude um, it's just not designed to process gratitude because um, that's doesn't save your life um, so if you engage in thankfulness. If you start saying out loud things that you're thankful for, you start writing down things that you're thankful for, your brain has no choice but to shut off the fight or flight thing and to engage the parts of your brain that uh, can process gratitude. Um, so I thought we could end tonight just by briefly sharing some things that we're thankful for um, 
and I'll start, but I just have been sitting here saying, I'm so thankful for all of you that are going into schools tomorrow and that are taking care of our kids. Um, and that there are people that are thinking about how can I best help children process their emotions and feel safe. Um, I just think that's a beautiful thing. So thank you all for that. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my neighbors who got a delivery of concrete this week that they have been hoping for for weeks and the rain has delayed them. And uh, they are so excited that it finally got poured and now they're just watching it dry. Now, watching concrete dry might not be exciting to a lot of people, but when you've been waiting weeks for it, yeah, it's exciting. I'm just really thankful for this community and such a peaceful place to call home. I'm thankful for the moments of silence where I can just be still and connect with God. I'm thankful for all those moments that bring us back to just the joy of life, laughter, good food, friends. Anytime you can just feel that joy, even in the midst of struggle or a lot of what ifs. I'm thankful for my uh, the friends and family that constantly remind me that there is light um, and there is love and uh, it just gives me hope to keep going and, and to do my best. I'm thankful that I can be part of the Hope Fellowship and get this encouragement and you guys have all accepted me and I appreciate that. I was just saying when we got on the call, I think it's so cool that Ben's mom comes. <laughs> it's so nice to see you every week. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the new friendships. <laughs> Thanks for Ben, too. We appreciate him. Thanks, Ben. We'll give you credit. <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful for family and friends and community and neighbors that have shared so much of their garden this week. We are so full of stir fries and all, all goodness, but yeah, nature's bounty and a backyard to uh, catch my breath and have God reveal God's self to me there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really grateful for the time I've gotten to have with, um, with uh, the kids here, with um, Noah and Lucy and Cora. We just, we've had some fun days together where we've gotten to, bond and color and it's just been really nice and that's meant to last for all of us. And see now none of your brains are trying to figure out whether you need to run or fight. So wonderful. <laughs> um, truly uh, prayers to all of you that are going into schools tomorrow or for your children that are or for your children that are staying at home. Um, trust uh, I read one of the best things I saw on the internet this week was just a simple thing that said, prayerfully consider the choice you need to make for your kids and then just trust God. And I think that we, we can go crazy thinking of all the variables, but um, do the best thing to take care of your children if you have them or your grandchildren and trust that God will be with you. So go this week with grace and peace. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week. I'm so thankful for this group and for the encouragement and support that it provides for all of us. So have a good week. See you later. Have a great week. Good luck, everybody. We love you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.